Let's talk about these anti-flat earth defense mechanisms the vast majority of people seem to have. The first one is the term flat earth itself. When people hear that word, or they hear you questioning the globe model, the moon landing, or anything of that sort, they go, wait a minute, you're not a flat earther, are you? You're a flat earther, aren't you? With this condescending, all-knowing tone, as if, if you accept this label, you've been pigeonholed, and anything you say afterwards holds no value. And why is this? Because of websites like the Flat Earth Society, giving misinformation and straw man arguments, and mockumentaries like Behind the Curve, showcasing the worst examples of so-called flat earthers for everyone to laugh at. So now, you're guilty by association if you admit that you're a flat earther. I'll use the flat earth keyword for the algorithm, because it's what everyone searches for. But I named my children's book The Earth Plane, and we named our movie Level, purposely creating quote-unquote flat earth content without this pigeonholed label in the title. So of course, among other globe skeptics, level earthers, whatever you want to call us, we can accept that we are flat earthers, but when your friends and family members or strangers on the street you're trying to convince hear a bit of your skepticism and then ask, oh, you're a flat earther, aren't you? I recommend doing as Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve does, and insisting that no, you're not a flat earther, because the earth has mountains, hills, and valleys, so of course the earth's not flat, thereby disarming their first anti-flat earth defense mechanism, because you don't admit to being their straw man version of a globe skeptic, what they have seen in mockumentaries or on the Flat Earth Society as a flat earther. No, you're not that. You're just a man or woman like anyone else, questioning their reality, questioning what they're told, not just believing outright what the government or government organization says. So the next one, once you've disarmed them and they realize, oh yeah, he is a flat earther, regardless of what he calls himself. Their next anti-flat earth defense mechanism will be, why? But why? Why would they lie? The incessant mantra of the ball earther. But, 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 why would they lie? It's not even a question. It's a defense mechanism. They haven't researched the evidence for an alternative shape of the earth for even a minute. But suddenly, they want to know the motive for this lie. Yeah, right. This isn't a genuine question. Imagine a detective rolling up to a crime scene, and there's blood all over the place, bodies everywhere, stinks to high heaven, and little deputy rookie volunteer rocks up behind him, taps him on the shoulder, and says, uh, What do you think the motive would be for a crime here? I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing uh, why there would be a murder here. The detective looks at him, squints his eyes, waves his hand, shows the blood on the walls, the bodies on the floor, asks the rookie genuinely, are you not seeing this? Do you not see the evidence all around you? And the rookie, as if blind to the crime scene, unable to research or open his eyes long enough to see any of the evidence, just impotently continues on, asking, but, but why? When people ask you, but why would they lie about the shape of the earth, when they haven't even researched the evidence whatsoever? That question is not a question. It's a defense mechanism. And if somebody is just asking you a question as a defense mechanism, you're not required to give them an answer, nor is it in your best interest to try and give them an answer. Because 
Why are they asking you that defense mechanism question in the first place? Because it's such a huge and open-ended question, and you are not the one who's lying, so you couldn't possibly explain the motive of the liars, even if you knew it to the finest detail. Therefore, regardless of what answer you give them, or how good it is, they're just waiting for you to open your mouth so they can laugh and scoff at whatever answer you try to give to their impossible question. But why would they lie? People who ask this question are unaware of just how prevalent lies have been and continue to be throughout history, in all facets of society, in the media, in government, in history, in science. The lies are everywhere. And anyone that's going to ask you, but why would they lie, is obviously a mainstream media-believing conformist sheeple who hasn't got the slightest idea of how the world actually works, and trying to hold their hand and explain to them the entirety of history and politics and conspiracies that have been hidden from them is an impossible task. As they say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can lead humans to standing bodies of level water, but you can't make them understand that they're impossible to bend. So when ballers chant their why would they lie mantra at you, don't feel obligated to try and dish up some answer that's somehow going to satisfy these insatiable people. If they really cared, they'd be looking into it as deeply as you are. And instead of that question being some flippant defense mechanism, it would be a genuine question, like it is for you or me. I can list dozens of reasons why they would lie, and I have in other videos, but just realize that this barrage of questions that ball earthers throw at you are more defense mechanisms than genuine questions, and you're not required to try and answer all of these defense mechanism questions. One of the biggest impediments to waking up is ego, and it is their ego that's chanting these but why would they lie mantras, these oh you're a flat earther. You'll notice your more enlightened friends and family members, when you told them about it, didn't come at you with this kind of attitude and these dismissive questions. Your more open-minded friends and family members were probably curious and interested, and when they asked questions, they were good questions, and they listened to the answers, and then you had productive conversations following them. This is a whole different thing than you get with these other people, and almost all people, when you ask them if they consider themselves to be open-minded, answer in the affirmative. So everyone likes to think of themselves as open-minded, but notice theirs and your reactions to certain things, and notice if you really are as open-minded as you think. The next anti-flat earth defense mechanism, aka insincere question, asked by these egoistic people is, how could they pull it off? Why are there no whistleblowers? You're telling me everyone that works at NASA is in on it and lying? You're telling me everyone in every space agency around the world, every teacher, every astrophysicist, every scientist is in on the lie? Again, as you can tell from the attitude, from the way they asked the question, it's not a real question, but a defense mechanism. And again, People who actually ask this question genuinely can and will find the answer. For example, most people, scientists, teachers, even people within NASA and other space agencies, are just duped like everyone else, and they're compartmentalized in a hierarchy of need-to-know basis. So the only people that are actually in the know are the actor-nauts and the very highest higher-ups in these organizations. And again, what these scoffing people have never researched, don't understand or realize, 
are things like Freemasonry, the prevalence and potency of secret societies in the world. They don't realize that literally all of the astronauts were members of this largest and oldest secret society in the world, and their members are blood oath bound, sworn to secrecy. So why are there no whistleblowers? Research Freemasonry, secret societies, blood oaths, and why these people would never and could never blow the whistle. Research Freemasons like Captain Morgan and John Robison, and you'll see exactly what happens to Freemasons who break rank and try to blow the whistle. But again, the people condescendingly asking these questions, they don't care. They're not asking the question for you to give them an answer. They're asking you the question to shut you up and to laugh at you. So what is the actual effective way of dealing with these people? I've tried giving genuine answers to them, spending your time and energy and patience, eating your pride to allow them to talk to you condescendingly while you still sincerely try to give them answers because the only reason you were talking to them about this in the first place is because you genuinely want to help and inform them. But all they see is an opportunity to laugh, condescend, and boost their own egos by stomping on yours. Now it's not our duty, nor is it even that effective, to allow them to do this. And it may sound harsh or crass or ineffective to those who haven't experienced this to the degree someone like myself has. But I'll give you my advice. When someone comes at you with this attitude, give it right back to them. Don't waste your time, energy, and patience trying to be sincere to someone who just wants to condescend and laugh at you. Laugh right back at them for their stupid belief in a wobbling, spinning, tilting, space testicle in an infinite vacuum with bendy oceans and upside-down people in Australia. Laugh at them for thinking they can dig a hole to China and find more sky below them. Roll your eyes and tell them, okay, then enjoy spinning on your wobbling space ball, genius. By refusing to engage with them and taking their ego down a notch like this, you're actually helping plant a seed that will make them genuinely more interested next time. And when you withhold information from them because of their bad attitude, that's the negative reinforcement people like this need. You know, your good friends who didn't laugh at you and condescend you, you were able to give them positive reinforcement. Use your time, energy, and patience to explain things to them. But when people use these anti-flat-earth defense mechanism questions and give you an attitude, don't even bother answering these people. Just plant the seed and walk away. Come back to water it another day. Or let somebody else water it along the way. It's not your responsibility to hold these people's hand. Just plant your seed and go on to more fertile ground. Because even if you do answer their question, then they'll just ask you the next defense mechanism query. Why does it matter? How does it change my life? I still have to go to work in the morning. So why does it even matter? I don't really care either way. So now, suddenly, it doesn't matter to their life if the entire world has been lied to about something as fundamental as where we are for <laughs> the entirety of humanity for centuries, duped about literally the most fundamental truth possible. And these people are like, yeah, but why does it matter? What does it even matter? How does that change my life at all? If the fact that you and everyone you know has believed the biggest lie in history <laughs> doesn't matter to you or change your life, what does that say about you and your life? What is important to you then? How could the truth not be important? I got so annoyed with this stupid question, I even wrote a song about it. Hey Eric, why does it even matter if the world is round or flat or we revolve around the sun or if the sun revolves around us? 
I still have to go to work tomorrow, and it hurts regardless. I still have to pay my bills, and so I fail to see your logic. Please stop adding to the list of things in life that make me suffer. I don't want to be empowered, I just want to be a martyr. I would rather ask you why you think it matters than be honest and admit the simple truth is that I haven't thought about it. And refuse to do my research, I don't even click your links, and when you ask me what I thought about them, I don't even think. I just want to pop some mollies, dance around and get my jollies, in a club or off in Bali. I don't want to contemplate about the shape of where we are now. Human race, mental state, being raped and the like, it feels good. Slavery is fine with me, and now I've answered my own question, because to people like me, it just doesn't matter, does it? So then the next thing they do, whether you've given them answers to their initial anti-flat earth defense mechanism questions or not, they'll start to get into the, well, then explain this, and explain that, questions, with a smirk, a mocking tone of voice, and narrow-minded impatience that shows they aren't even asking to learn the answer. They're asking to put the onus of unnecessary verbiage onto you, so they can just scoff at whatever you say next, no matter how rational or logical it is. Well, explain sunsets then. Well, explain time zones then. What about the Coriolis effect? What about Foucault's pendulum? And they'll often throw a bunch of them at you all at once like that. Again, proving it a defense mechanism, not a real question. Because in real conversation, you can only answer one question at a time. And when people throw them all at you like that, it's an attack, not a conversation. And as a skilled conversationalist, you need to understand when you're being attacked and switch up your tactics. This isn't a normal conversation anymore. And it's not your job to explain this and explain that. And what about this? And what about that? To these people. If they actually care, they will do what you did and read books, watch videos, search the internet, perform their own experiments, and figure out the truth for themselves. And at this point, I'll give another piece of advice. When you get to the explain this, explain that stage of questions, it's difficult in impromptu conversation to give perfect answers to these difficult questions. So instead of even trying, you're better off recommending them specific videos that answer the questions. For example, on my channel, I have at least one video for pretty much every single question I've ever heard asked about the Flat Earth, on purpose, so that people can do this. Instead of trying to give their best version of an answer in a comment or in a conversation, they can send a link to a video that answers the question in a much more complete, well thought out way than anyone could do when put on the spot. And if they won't watch a video, which many of them will say, no, just answer it. Just talk to me. Just tell me in a comment. I don't want to watch another video. Well. Again, they're showing you they're disingenuous. They're showing you they don't actually care. They're showing you these questions aren't real questions, they're defense mechanisms. And they're asking them to shut you up and to make you look stupid. So the second you recognize someone coming at you with this kind of attitude, I recommend starting to close up shop, you know? You don't have to immediately block them and run away, but I mean recognize that, okay, we're about done here, and just take their ego down a notch. Give them a little flippant remark, you know, I like to tell them, enjoy spinning on your wobbling space testicle, genius. A little sarcastic boost to their ego, you know, call them a genius. In this day and age, you can't, you can't even call people stupid anymore, you'll get flagged and blocked for bullying. So, you gotta use strategic sarcasm like I do, and you just be like, whoa. Well, enjoy spinning on your wobbling space testicle, you genius. And I'm telling you, answering them in that way piques their interest much more than giving them an actual answer to their actual question. You know why? Because they see that you do value your time and energy, and that you actually have enough intuition and follow-through to notice when some snarky moron is just trying to bait you in. 
The next anti-flat earth defense mechanism is the appeal to authority. You're not a scientist. You're saying you know more than Galileo, Newton, Copernicus, Einstein, and every astronomer in history? Again, not understanding the multitude of lies throughout history, the multitude of lies within science, the prevalence of Freemasonry among these heliocentric scientists, nor do they even know the trivium and logic and logical fallacies and understand what appeal to authority is. Appeal to authority is a logical fallacy. It's a sophist argument that means nothing. Just because someone is a so-called expert in a field does not mean their every word is truth. And that is why such appeals to authority are fallacious arguments that hold no merit. And what's the next one once you throw that out? Appeal to futility. Once you've thrown out their appeal to their space priests at NASA, then they may start to appeal to futility instead and say, oh, we'll never know. How could little old me know? How could little old you know? We'll never know in this lifetime. You even get a lot of guys in the so-called conspiracy community doing this appeal to futility. So-called flat earthers, also. Mark Sargent, for years, said that he doesn't know if the earth is flat. He's just sure that it's not a ball. Sam Tripoli has also been riding the fence for years now, where he refuses to accept that the earth is flat and motionless, and instead continues his endless appeal to futility, where he says, I'm too stupid, I, I, and I don't have time to research it, I don't have time to figure it out, uh, so I don't know, I don't know, but what I'm sure is NASA's full of shit, the moon landings never happened, and I'm skeptical of the globe. I don't understand people that have conspiracy programs, conspiracy podcast, but then says they don't have the time or the energy to research conspiracies. And then they just sit on the fence and say, I don't know, I don't know about everything. What is the point of your show if everything holds equal merit? Straddling the fence is good for viewership because then you don't piss anyone off. But if you actually care about the truth, you can't just straddle these fences for years. If you want to be a leader, you have to actually have discernment. You actually have to make decisions and follow through with them. And that leads me to another type, the endless debater. Whether it's on the flat earth side or the globe earth side, debate is the last refuge of the cultist. Debate is not how one arrives at truth. Objective reality isn't debatable, and anyone looking to frame the discussion that way is being disingenuous to begin with. I'll talk with people about Flat Earth, but everyone wants to debate, like we're discussing what color to change the White House to or something. But we're talking about direct, observable, measurable, empirical reality here. It's not a debatable subject. So when people go on about, why won't you debate? When is there going to be a debate? Again, it's an egoistic mentality wanting to see some kind of winner or loser playing this subjective game. But again, if you wanted to change the color of the White House, that would be something you could debate. Debate the merits, the whys, the pros and the cons, and come to a final conclusion at the end. But when you're talking about physical reality, demonstrable, tangible substance, there is no debate to be had. There's only truth and fiction, reality and lies. The problem is these people have no intuition, and they're gullible as all get up. They think the government and mainstream media are bastions and beacons of infallible truth. And again, this is why no debate or well-worded answers to these questions are going to do anything to these people. They're so far gone, they've been so indoctrinated into the mainstream propaganda, their government-warped view of the world, that it would literally take them many months of genuine introspection and deep research to get out of the prison their mind has become.
they don't even realize that their questions are defense mechanisms. They think they're being rational and logical. They think your skepticism is so far beneath them that they can barely hear what you're saying anymore. So again, instead of running around and doing all their research for them, I suggest just noting and verbalizing the fact that you see their attitude, you hear that condescension, and it's fine. You were just checking. You can see they're not ready. And you've been treated this way before. It's fine. You're just not going to subject yourself to it again. And they may even try to uh, reverse then. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, come on, come on. Because they wanted to laugh at you. They don't like that you're using your intuition and then asserting yourself and not playing their games anymore. They'll start coming at you like, oh, no, 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 oh, come on, oh, come on, no, no, I'm, I'm serious, I'm serious, why would they lie? No, oh, come on, you know, just explain the sunset to me. Explain time zones. So just plant the seed, walk away, find more fertile ground, and if they come back with a better attitude, then it's time to water those seeds and you may see them sprout eventually, because that's how it actually works. Nobody wakes up in a single conversation. The subject is too big. You can only plant seeds and then hope that they are open-minded enough, intuitive and discerning enough, and care enough to actually look into it for themselves. And when they do, it'll be obvious. They'll come back with a blown mind, and your next conversation will be a whole different thing. And that leads me to my last recommendation which is watch parties. If you really want to wake someone up, get them to agree to sit down with you and watch an informative documentary on the subject, like our new Level movie, or 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball, or The History of Flat Earth, or How Everything Works on Flat Earth are some examples. By getting them to agree to sit down and watch a video with you that explains the answers to all of their questions without them even having to ask them, and does so in an engaging and hopefully entertaining manner, will get past these anti-flat earth defense mechanisms and get to the deluded soul, the deluded baller soul in there. And remember, people have been programmed through the media to view conspiracies and conspiracy theorists as crazy and unstable. So when they start making you feel this way, by, with their condescension and scoffing at you, don't retaliate by going all crazy and getting mad at them and raising your voice and, and all this, but lead by example, by showing them that you're so far above their worldview and their egos need to stomp on you for presenting something different from what they think they know, show them that you're confident enough in what you know to be true that you don't have to share it with them. You were trying to do it as a favor, and when they show you that they don't want to hear it, do them the favor of stopping. Put your hands up if you don't want to know about it, if you don't want to talk about it. I have other more intelligent, more open-minded, less egoistic friends I can talk with about these things. Thanks.